Kamau Bell is, among other things, a host on CNN. He fronts a show on that channel called United Shades of America. It's run there for two seasons now. Bell calls himself a political provocateur, but that doesn't quite capture it. In fact, he is a supporter of Antifa. On Sunday, Bell showed up at the No Hate in the Bay rally and addressed the crowd with a bullhorn. You remember the event? It's the one where mobs and black masks attacked people they thought might have voted for Donald Trump. Bell offered his encouragement. So when the Nazis leave, as they have left, by Nazis, bye! You have to stand up for the black people, for the brown people, for the LGBT people, for the immigrants, for everybody, every day! Keep in mind, this ironically named anti-hate rally was created to oppose the Patriot Prayer event organized by Joey Gibson. We've had Gibson on the show several times. Gibson is not a Nazi. He's not even close. He's politically moderate. And Tifa attacked him anyway. They knocked him off his feet sprayed him, smashed him in the head with a pole. Last night we talked to a man called Keith Campbell. He's not a Nazi either. He just happened to be standing at the event with a camera. Antifa thugs knocked him to the ground and began pummeling him. They might have killed him if a conscientious liberal hadn't shielded Campbell with his body. Joey Gibson and Keith Campbell are normal people. They believe in American ideas like free speech and free association. That's why Antifa attacked them, because Antifa does not believe in those things, or for that matter, in liberal democracy or capitalism. They hate this country. They want to tear it down. They are totalitarian in their beliefs and in their aims. Even if they didn't use violence, Antifa would still be illegitimate and a threat to America. None of that seems to matter to Kamau Bell. He's happy to stand up on stage and call his opponents Nazis. That's not a label you use on people you want to debate. It's a label you use to incite rage. He had to know how this would end. He did it anyway. In the days since, Bell has not apologized. On Twitter, he issued a statement saying he wants a world safe for, quote, black people, brown people, LGBT people, immigrants, refugees, Muslims, Jewish people, pagans, Unitarian Universalists, Mormons, disabled people, poor people, mentally ill people, all people of color, Sikhs, Palestinians, homeless people, Houston's people, and all people affected by the hurricane, climate change scientists, public school teachers, freedom fighters, people caught up in the criminal justice system over some BS, minimum wage workers, Workers, open micers, and even white people, especially the white allies out in those Berkeley streets today, and the white half of my children. Well, that's a long list, but not everyone, as you'll notice, got equal treatment. Imagine if we spoke at a rally where right-wingers in masks tried to kill people they disagreed with, Hillary voters maybe, and then afterward we issued a statement saying we were just working on behalf of whites, Christians, gun owners, taxpayers, maybe even some black people, especially those who voted Republican. How would that go over? This show would be canceled quickly, and it would deserve to be canceled. If you're not willing to say you want a world safe for all Americans equally, you are peddling hate, and Bell is. We contacted CNN to see if they had any response to one of their anchors stoking violent extremism as a side gig. They have not responded so far. We also invited Bell on tonight to see if he'd be willing to defend what he did. He wasn't. Joe Concha writes about media for The Hill. He joins us tonight. So, Joe, we couldn't get a response out of CNN, which is a little odd for a news organization to refuse to comment uh, about something. Is this within bounds, though, In for, bounds. One of their, for one of their hosts to be addressing a rally like this filled with people in black masks, Antifa through a bullhorn. Let's, let's be clear who Antifa is. Uh, obviously, they're a group that even Nancy Pelosi has denounced. Laura Ingram on this network has suggested they should be labeled a terror organization. Berkeley's mayor has called them a criminal gang. So this is not a group that you want any network host within a thousand yards of at a rally addressing. There, there's a hard and fast rule at every news organization, Tucker, and that is that Hosts cannot, or journalists or reporters for that matter, cannot attend rallies or speak at rallies that its newsroom may be covering. It's a conflict of interest. It's a whole bowl of wrong. And this is something that CNN needs to address and actually give 
Kamal Bell a simple ultimatum. You're either an activist or you're, ho or you're a host, but you cannot be both because this is reflecting on us. It makes us look bad. So I hope they have that conversation soon. But I'm afraid that we have precedent here, Tucker. Van Jones, uh, who is a pundit and a host on that network as well, uh, he spoke at a rally one day after Donald Trump's inauguration, January 21st. That was the same rally where Madonna said that she wanted to blow up the White House. So nothing was done then with Van Jones. I doubt anything will be done with Kamal Bell as well. And that conflict of interest is simply very difficult to ignore for a major international news organization. So they'll say, look, Kamal Bell is not a journalist. He is a contract employee or mm -hmm. hosts a show for us, a weekly show. Um, and, you know, that might be good enough for me, to be completely honest, if this were just a normal political rally. But this was a rally at which the people he was speaking to broadly wound up committing serious acts of violence, sending people to the hospital, trying to beat a guy to death who we interviewed last night. This seems very different to me from talking at the, you know, Jefferson Jackson Day dinner or whatever. Do you know what I mean? To the right. Palm Beach Democratic Party or something like that. These are crazy people who are espousing and committing violence. And there were 14 arrests there. Uh, so obviously that this was something uh, that turned violent. I mean, we see the pictures. Uh, they, they speak for themselves. Yeah. Uh, but seeing it, and this is obviously PETA. Uh, like if you're, you're doing that as far as being an activist, I have no problem with that. Uh, but CNN has done the right thing in these situations as well this year. You're remember Kathy Griffin holding up that fake severed head of President Trump and she was fired. She did the New Year's Eve broadcast with Anderson Cooper. You remember Reza Aslan, he hosted a show on that network, kind of the same way Kamal Bell does. It's not necessarily hard journalism, but it, nevertheless, he represents the network and he was fired for calling the president a POS on Twitter. So it, it's going to be interesting to see where CNN goes with this, but if they're not responding for comment, then I would imagine then they have no problem with it. The, the silence speaks for itself. Yeah, this does seem like it's crossing some kind of line, and I don't think they'll even respond to it, because then you're going to have to answer questions like, do you think this is a legitimate group? Is it okay to come to a political rally dressed in a mask and smash people in the face with weapons? And they don't want to deal with that, so they're just going to ignore it. Yeah, by um, the way, I'm very surprised. I know Nancy Pelosi, I mentioned her in the beginning. She has denounced this group, but Maxine Waters and Adam Schiff, when I last checked, they're Congress people from California as well, and they haven't addressed it. And the only thing I could think of, Tucker, is that it's probably very hard for them to get on television. You rarely see them. You rarely see them do interviews. So I would imagine that's probably why they haven't been able well, to get around Well, they're never asked. Yet. They're never asked that's because right. from the point of view of most hosts on television, there are no enemies on the left. It's the good versus the evil. Our side is good. It's grotesque. And they're going to regret it, by the way, in the end, because these people are a danger to them as well, I would say. So there was an exchange this morning. I want to get your take on it between uh, Chris Cuomo, the morning show host at CNN, and Kellyanne Conway from the White House. Here, here's how okay. it went. Whether or not what happened in Harvey and why it's happening and why these storms happen open up a discussion about the role of climate change. Is the president, is the administration open to that conversation? Chris, we're trying to help the people whose lives are literally underwater and you want to have a conversation about climate change. Imagine if we could figure out why a hundred year storm seems to happen every other year. You play amateur climatologist tonight and I will play professional helper to those in need. <laughs> what well, do you make of that? Uh, two things with that. It, obviously, it was an unbecoming question because there's still search and rescue going on. But also, there are these things called post-storm attribution studies, Tucker, where they have to pour over data. I've spoken to meteorologists and even to climate scientists about this for weeks and even months to determine why this storm may have happened and why it exactly. did the damage that it did. So you can't ask that question until those studies give you a definitive answer. Well, yeah. Are oh, you saying science is complicated? You know what's not complicated? Moral preening. It's very simple. That's why they like it so much. <laughs> I'm a good person. You're not. I love it. Joe, thank you for that. Good to see you. Enjoy your holiday weekend.